Welcome to a video on linear programming. In this video, we're going to learn how to set up the feasible region using Desmos. Let's get started. The feasible region is a set of all possible solution to a linear programming problem. Essentially, it's the set of all points x, y that satisfy all of the linear inequalities of the constraints at the same time. Graphically, it's where all of the shaded regions overlap. Here are the steps on how to graph the feasible region in Desmos. I'll go over these steps and then I'll use an example to show you how to locate the feasible region. We want to first enter each constraint into a cell on the left side. Then identify the feasible region. This is going to be where all of the shaded areas overlap. Then we want to locate the corners of the feasible region by clicking on each point. All of the graphs in this video are linked in the video description below. This is the first example that will work in this video. We want to maximize the objective function p equals 20x plus 30y subject to the following constraints. x plus y is less than or equal to 7. x plus 2y is less than or equal to 12. 2x plus y is less than or equal to 12. x is greater than or equal to 0. And y is greater than or equal to 0. Let's go over to Desmos and we're going to start by entering in all of the constraints on the left hand side. Go to the website desmos.com and click on the button in the center of the screen that says graphing calculator. Or from the math tools menu, select graphing calculator, which is usually the first option. When the graphing window opens, go over to the left hand side and enter the constraints into each cell. As you can see, I've already entered my objective function and the constraints on the left hand side. Now I want to click on these buttons to reveal the graph. Linear inequalities shade parts of the graph. The feasible region is going to be the solution to all five of these inequalities. That means that we're looking for where the shaded areas overlap. You can use your mouse to zoom in and out, or you can use the buttons on the upper right hand side to zoom in and zoom out. Sometimes it's helpful to zoom out so you can start to see where all of these inequalities seem to overlap. Zooming out helps us see that it looks like the overlapping area has got to be in this region toward the center of my screen. We know that it has to be in the first quadrant since X and Y are required to be greater than or equal to zero. And the only place that occurs is going to be the first quadrant. If you have a hard time seeing where the regions overlap, try deselecting all of them and then start one by one. So if I start at the bottom with y greater than or equal to zero, I know that my feasible region has to satisfy y greater than or equal to zero. That means that just with this one inequality, we know that our feasible region has to be in the top half of the plane. Adding the constraint that x has got to be greater than or equal to zero requires it to be on the right side of the plane. However, we know that all of these inequalities have to be satisfied by the feasible region. That means both x and y have to be greater than or equal to zero. That's only going to occur in quadrant one. Working my way from the bottom to the top, I'm going to add the inequality 2x plus y is less than or equal to 12. Now, just using these last three inequalities, I know that I'm going to be restricted to this triangle between 0, 0, 6, 0, and 0, 12. So let's go up to the graph settings by clicking on the wrench in the upper right. And let's require our x value to be at least negative 5 all the way up through 10. And for our y values, let's require y to be greater than negative 5. And we know that the largest y was going to be was 12 with that third inequality. So let's say 15 for right now. So currently, I only have three inequalities shaded on the graph. These three inequalities overlap in this triangular area right here in the center of my screen. But this is not yet the feasible region. It's only part of the feasible region. Let's add the next inequality, just working my way from the bottom of the top. 
x plus 2y greater than or equal to 12. Now that we've added this orange line, I know we have to be below the orange line, to the right of the blue line, above the green line, and below this red line. So we're looking at this polygon that's got four sides at the minute toward the center of my screen. But we still have one more inequality to satisfy. Let's add that on. Adding on the last constraint added this purple inequality. And so now I can see that we're going to have 0, 0 is a corner, 6, 0 is a corner, 5, 2 is a corner, 2, 5 is a corner, and 0, 6 is a corner. That is our feasible region. Once I know all of my corners, I like to add them all to a table on a cell on the left hand side. Let's click in a cell, go up to the top left where it says add item, there's a plus sign, and choose table. And now enter the five corners in the table. So that was 0, 0, 6, 0, 5, 2, 2, 5, and 0, 6. And I'm just using tab to move between cells. So those five points are now our corners of our feasible region. To take this one step further, add the command polygon x1, y1 into the next cell on the left hand side. I'm going to choose to make this region black so we can see it. Now what's highlighted in black, that is our feasible region. A good way to double check that that's your feasible region is to turn off all five constraints and then systematically one by one turn them on to make sure your feasible region satisfies all of your constraints. That means that every constraint will probably share a border with your polygon. So now we know that this is a bounded feasible region. And the fundamental theorem of linear programming tells us that a bounded feasible region will have both a maximum and a minimum value, and it will occur at the corners. So the nice thing about Desmos is it's very easy to evaluate the objective function by using the table we created. Go over to your, the table on the left hand side and click in the top of the third column. Insert the right hand side of your objective function, but instead of just using x and y, use x1 and y1. So in this case, I have entered 20x1 plus 30y1. That's just my objective function, instead of x and y, I've replaced it with x1 and y1. If you notice, it has evaluated our objective function at all five of those corners. And I can see that the maximum value is 190. And it occurs when x is 2 and y is 5. So there we just solve this linear programming problem. To summarize, we wanted to draw the feasible region for this problem where we were asked to maximize the function p equals 20x plus 30y, subject to the five constraints. We used Desmos to draw our, the feasible region, which was a five-sided polygon shape. We found the five corners. We evaluated the objective function, or p, at those five corners. And we found a maximum value for p of 190, and that occurred when x was 2 and y was 5. Now let's take a look at a second example. Let's draw the feasible region for this linear programming problem. We want to minimize the function c equals 3.33x plus 2.00y, subject to the constraints 407x plus 271y is greater than or equal to 4700, x is greater than or equal to 1, and y is greater than or equal to 1. Let's go back to Desmos and enter our three constraints on the left side. 
here we are back in Desmos. Over on the left hand side, you can see I've entered my objective function and the constraints. You want to enter one constraint per cell. Now let's go ahead and locate the feasible region. I'm going to turn these constraints on one at a time, starting at the bottom and working my way up. So first we have where y is greater than or equal to 1. That means that we have to be above this blue line. X is greater than or equal to 1, which means that we have to be to the right of the red line. This means that we know our feasible region has to be in the upper right corner. Once again, this is in quadrant 1, but we have the added restrictions that X and Y both have to be greater than 1 in this case. And now let's turn on our third constraint, which was 407X plus 271Y is greater than or equal to 4,700. On the upper right, I can see that there is a line, but I definitely need to zoom out. Once again, use the plus or minus buttons on the upper right to zoom out or use your mouse to scroll out. We're looking for where all three of these shaded regions overlap, and it looks like it's in this upper right corner of quadrant one. This region is going to be unbounded. Let's go over to the graph settings and let's change our graph settings to where X has got to be between negative 2 and 20. Let's make Y between negative 2 and 20. And then I'm going to go ahead and lock the viewport. So it looks like we're looking at this upper right portion of this graph. Let's click on the points to find our corners. It looks like there's only two. So we have a corner at 1, 15.8, and another corner at 10.91. Just as we did before, let's enter our corners into a table. On the upper left-hand side, click the plus button to add an item, and then choose table. And we'll enter our two corner points, 1, 15.8, and 10.91. Now we have our two corners. It looks like our feasible region for this problem is unbounded. And that's mainly because this first constraint was greater than or equal to 4,700. That means that this first constraint was everything above the green line and that area continues on to infinity. The fundamental theorem of linear programming tells us since this feasible region is unbounded, there will be no maximum value. So if this problem had asked me to maximize this function, we would be done because there would be no solution. However, the instructions asked us to minimize this function, and the fundamental theorem of linear programming does guarantee us that if you have an unbounded region, if a minimum occurs, it will occur at one of the corner points. In the earlier example, I showed you a trick to write polygon x1, y1, and that would draw a polygon around the feasible region. Because this region only has two corners, the polygon command in Desmos is simply trying to connect the dots. And if you have two corners, the way you would connect them would be with a straight line not with a polygon. So for consistency, I'll show you how you can get around this using Desmos. But just keep in mind that you don't have to draw the polygon, but I usually draw the polygon just to emphasize where the feasible region is. So let's go ahead and delete our command for polygon. And then let's click on the gear on the top right side, and let's make a copy of the table with our corners. But let's change them from x1, y1. Let's change this to x2, y2. And what I'm going to do with this new table is I'm just going to add a few additional points just so we can really zero in on what our feasible region looks like. However, please note that these three additional points are not corners of the feasible region. I'm just adding them in so I can draw a polygon to look like our feasible region. I'm going to add three points at the ends of this graph. So I'm going to add the point 21, 20, 20, and 120. So let's add 
20, 1, 20, 20, and 1, 20. Now let's use the polygon tool to draw a polygon around our second list, x2, y2. I'm going to change the color to black just to make it easier to see on this video. Now in black, that is the idea of our feasible region. It stretches on to infinity on the upper right hand side. It is an unbounded region. If I deselect my constraints, now I can better see the idea of this feasible region. If you wanted to double check this is the right area, you could always go through your constraints one at a time just to make sure that they share a common edge with your feasible region. Now let's take it further and let's complete this problem by evaluating the objective function at the corners. So let's go back up to the table that just has our two corners. In the third column, let's enter our objective function replacing x with x1 and replacing y with y1. Now we've evaluated our objective function and we're looking for a minimum here. It looks like our minimum is going to be 34.93 and that occurs at when x is 1 and y is 15.8. To summarize, we were trying to minimize the function c equals 3.33x plus 2.00y, subject to the three constraints. Using Desmos, we found that these constraints led to an unbounded region. We added a few additional points just to draw a polygon around what I would consider to be the idea of a feasible region. In reality, the feasible region does stretch on to infinity toward the upper right. So there will not be a maximum value since the region is unbounded, but we did find a minimum value of C equal to 34.9. And that occurred at one of our corners where X was one and Y was 15.8. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.